staying in a cabin is definitely a beautiful Canadian experience, especially when you do it in the winter and in the Rocky Mountains. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you what it's like to stay at Baker Creek Cabins, which is pretty much right across the highway from Lake Louise. We're Matt and Carla, a Canadian couple with two totally different backgrounds, sharing our experience and advice about traveling in Canada. So follow along as we continue to explore the second largest country on earth. Now we're going to take you on a little tour inside the cabin, which looks very, very Canadian. So this is actually the superior one bedroom plus loft cabin. So this is the one bedroom that has the queen bed inside it. As you can see, it has like a moose pillow, some plaid blankets and coverings. So it looks very Canadian. And then there's the main area, which is right in front of the bedroom where you have your couch. You have a nice wood burning fireplace. You have a nice place to sit here. You also have a table over there. And then you have your little kitchenette with a fridge and a microwave and even a Chemex coffee maker so you can brew some really fresh coffee here. Now we're in the loft. So you have another two double beds here. So in total, this cabin sleeps six. I believe the sofas also pull out. So definitely a perfect place to bring the whole family. And for <laughs> our family, we brought Matthew's parents, our doggy Maya, and Maggie. <laughs> she hates car rides, but she loves coming along, eh? Yes, you're a good girl. It's a good thing we have the pilot, because <laughs> whenever we bring <laughs> even just two extra people, <laughs> no other car would work. We just have so much stuff. Well, it's because you gotta bring your whole, your food. Yeah, well, with the cabin, you have to bring your own food, and of course, we have the dog stuff. Yeah. This is, just, this is just Carla stuff. I know, that's not true. That's the two of us. But it's mostly because we have the snow pants, the winter stuff. Oh, and Carla's probably bathroom stuff. No? I know, that's true. I didn't bring any. The parking lot looks decent because mm -hmm. it's a weekday. One of the nice things about visiting Lake Louise in the winter time is there's much fewer crowds than in the summer, so parking's not an issue. In the summer, this place is really a gong show, trying to find parking here. So definitely a great time to come in the winter. Plus it's beautiful. This trip's actually gonna be quite a bit more calm than usual. Normally we would go skiing at Lake Louise Ski Resort, which is right around the corner from the lodge, but this time we have nothing crazy adventurous planned, but we are gonna do something new right now. We're gonna take a sleigh ride right in front of the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise. You can put that on where you're locked. Oh, you yes, want. I guess it's better. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> first time on a sleigh in Lake Louise. Oh my God, look at that big ass. <laughs> Oh, I don't think it's that big. <laughs> so what kind of horses are these ones? They're a Percheron. And Coffee they're from, right? where are they originally from? Northern France. Okay. Napoleon War Horses. And they live just right here, right? Yeah, 10 minutes down the trail here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So are they born and raised here, like uh, uh, in Canada? In yeah. Kevin, the guy that owns all this, Kevin Stanton, he has a ranch at Kananaskis, oh, okay. and he, that's where all the horses are kept. He's got a whole bunch of saddle horses there right now that we do in the summertime. Okay. The big horses get put away and the saddle horses come out. Oh. And they're all at the ranch right now. The big horses get to enjoy their summer off? They, three and a half, four months a year is all they work. It's chill. Wow. And then they go eat grass and look at butterflies. <laughs> they got it made. Sounds like a pretty good gig. Round mountain there, uh -huh. yeah. called the big beehive, and right at the bottom of that is Muir Lake and Lake Agnes. And at Lake Agnes, in the summertime, they have a tea house there, and that's where you can hike up there. Or in the summertime, we'll bring out the saddle horses and take you up there on a saddle horse. You get your own horse. We've done that hike before. It's a really beautiful hike. There's actually three that we did in the same area. So if you want to check that out, we'll put a link, and you can watch that video. It's in the summer, though, of course. <laughs> We 
we're at the end of Lake Louise. We actually paddleboard also in the summer, all the way here. Looks very different in the winter. It's funny, when you look at ice climbing like this, it looks so hardcore, and in a way it is hardcore, but me and Carla have done it a couple of times now. I'll put some links in the description, because one of them was right along the Icefields Parkway in Jasper. How are you liking the ride? Good. A little chilly. <laughs> what? Nah. You're not cold, are you? I know. You look pretty bundled up. Yeah. Well, thanks to me, she's wearing my scarf, he's wearing my toque and my glove to Matthew's toque. <laughs> they didn't come very prepared. Yeah. You mean my gloves? <laughs> no, they're my gloves. Leave, Last time. leave it for somebody coming from Mexico to fix up the Canadians. I right? know. <laughs> I Last always come I came to Lake Louise, I, I didn't need any gloves. Yeah, because it was they're summer. Windy all of a sudden? Ah, yeah, a tornado! There's one thing we can always say about Lake Louise, it's always a little colder here than anywhere else yes. in the area, so yeah. definitely dress warm, even if it says it's going to be relatively warm for the winter, the wind can pick up, and I think just all the ice and being at the elevation, it's chilly. Yeah. What'd you find? We would find like two little dogs and a bear made of snow. Oh, oh my god, don't drop it, don't drop it. Oh, those are cute, eh? Yeah, they're so cute. <laughs> Did you make them? No. no I don't oh. <laughs> cute. Oh my god, I broke the tail. Oh. Aww. You do? Now that we're back in the cabin, the girls are going to start preparing our supper, and I'm going to get this fire going because my feet are freezing. When you're starting a fire, it helps to have some kindling, and kindling is a they have it all wrapped up here, but basically little little pieces of wood, they're easier to light. I line them up like a teepee. To cheat, you usually use newspaper like this. And then once it gets going, you can start adding the bigger logs. You scared of fire? Oh, she. <laughs> the other nice thing about cabins is if you do mess up the fire, I mean, there's heat anyway, so. <laughs> Well, that didn't take long. No, that was actually, I think it's a good idea that they wrap up the little kindling in the newspaper. <laughs> I might start doing that myself. What are you guys gonna make? A chicken burgers. And hamburgers. Uh, so they have an induction a stove up here. I need you to get it for me. <laughs> Pretty saggy to me. <laughs> a little bit more. Maggie! Oh! What is she doing? Oh, she just walked in front of me. I almost oh. stepped on her. That's the risk of having little dogs. <laughs> These chicken burgers are the best. Mm. I love them. And what I get to have a burgers? beef hamburger. Oh, that's not. And Gary got so cold that he had a nap, as you can tell. Look at his hair. <laughs> now we're out walking the dogs, eh? Yes, because they need to pee. So you may be wondering if all the cabins are dog friendly. And the answer is no, but a few of them. And ours is one of them, of course. And it's such a nice walk. I love all the lights. Since we're out for a walk, we thought we'd come check out the fitness center and sauna. This is actually a pretty cool place because as you saw, they have a very big gym. They have a pretty decent sized pool outside, of course, just in the summer. And then here is a steam room and a sauna. The steam room's out of order because they said a pipe just burst, but the sauna is available. So hopefully I check this out while we're here. For the night, we're just enjoying some hot chocolate, playing some cards, and enjoying the fire. So see you tomorrow.
Well, it's a beautiful morning here in Banff National Park. Really nice weather. I think it's only about minus five. And uh, we're right now out on a walk with the doggies for the morning. And we're actually checking out the river today that's right behind the cabins. I thought it was maybe a creek, like Baker Creek for the name of the, of the lodge. But no, this is actually the Bull River, the same river that flows through Calgary. How's the walk? I really like this property. It has so many amenities, like you can actually go cross-country skiing, there's a small skating rink, all the fire pits. Yeah, it's very pretty. All right, well now we're gonna take a little drive to Morant's Curve, which is only about 10 minutes away. This is a really famous place to try and get a photo of a train coming through the mountains along the river. It's a really beautiful shot, but you never know when the trains are coming. So we're just gonna go hang out there for a half hour, see if it happens, and fingers crossed. Even if we don't get to see the train, the view is beautiful. We saw the train! Yes, second time, not bad. And we were expecting it to come this way, but it actually came this way, so it comes both ways. Uh, but definitely this is the best view. And there's no schedule, so you just gotta hope to be here at the right time. It seems that in, during the weekdays it's more often. These were like an hour apart. Uh, but yeah, pretty nice. We're back to Johnston Canyon, one of our favorite easy walks in Banff National Park. It's actually in a pretty cool location because it's almost right in the middle between Banff and Lake Louise, two of the most popular places in all of Alberta. And what makes this hike special is, well, first of all, it's pretty easy. Almost anyone can probably do it. And it's just such a beautiful place in all seasons. But the winter is our favorite time to come here because the waterfalls that you see are actually frozen. Sometimes you can even see ice climbers climbing up them. So it just becomes this kind of like winter wonderland. And so today we're gonna to be doing both the lower falls and the upper falls. If you do them both, it takes about two to three hours for a return trip. So let's get going. And even though it's a pretty easy walk, for this we recommend bringing some crampons or cleats because in some areas can be quite slippery, so just for extra safety. Surprisingly, it's not that icy today. The snow is actually quite soft. I think you could make it in here easily with normal hiking boots and it's pretty much as beautiful as always except the trees are not covered in snow eh Carla? Yeah it looks way prettier when there's more snow on the trees. Is it here where you saw the dead the dead deer in the summer? It was it the summer or was it the winter? It was the summer. Yeah there it was I think a baby deer that maybe just fell down the cliff. I don't remember if it looked like a baby deer or not, but yeah, it looked small. It must have fell because it was under the water, but it's like rib cage was open. <laughs> it was kind of a so gruesome cool. photo, but I guess that's life in the wild. Even though there's two main waterfalls, the lower and the upper, there's actually like, I don't know, it feels like waterfalls mm -hmm. all through the canyon as you're going. And I think I remember in the summer there's a lot of like water streaming down the rocks. So I guess that's what happens. Ooh, the water looks so cold. Can you jump in and tell us? No, no, no. One of the cool things about the lower falls is you get to see them by going through a cave. You scared, Carla? No, I've been here many <laughs> times. But some people may not think that you go into another side of the mountain. Mm. I feel like we're entering Batman's lair. 
This is pretty cool because you can even see the water behind the ice. Now we're gonna to head to the Upper Falls and according to the map, the Upper Falls is uh, 1.5 miles and this one was only 0 0.5 miles. So we have twice as long of a walk to get there, but just wait until you see it. Oh no, it seems that the trail to the Upper Falls is closed. Construction. Oh. I mean, we've seen it before, but it really is like, you know, half the experience of being at Johnson Canyon, in my opinion. Really beautiful. It's actually where you see the ice climbers. Oh, yeah. That's it for today. <laughs> Something that we noticed on the highway, not far from Johnston Canyon, is Castle Camp internment. So we've known about this kind of dark history of Canada, we've learned it before, but we've never been to this stop. And a lot of people don't know that back in the 19, like 1914, 1915, during World War I, when Canada entered the war against, uh, I think it was Germany and Austria and those kind of places at the time, they actually rounded up a lot of people, over 8,000 men, and put them in internment camps. And they were actually forced to do a lot of labor. A lot of the highways that we probably know of today and things like that were made by them. But we noticed this on the side of the, the road that has a statue of one of the men. They all had their kind of suspenders. We were actually just saying how cold it gets here. And they're in like wool jackets, like with like a normal hat. It's crazy. I don't know how they survived and probably many didn't. And, but I actually noticed that there's a lot of like flowers being left here so we're assuming that maybe people in the area that had family that were in the internment camps which is pretty crazy to think because it says a lot of them come from the region that is now known as the Ukraine. What a lovely stay. I love the cabins. This is really like a winter wonderland. I love the surrounding areas and there's so many things to do around here as well. Now what's not to love? You're in Banff National Park and yeah great uh, the, the cabins are definitely a great feature especially if you have a whole family and you want to stay together and of course there's some pet friendly cabins. Obviously ours was one of them so it's a great place to bring the pooch as well and there's just like so many things to do in the area. You can get fat tire bikes here for free. We didn't get a chance to try those out this time because my parents can't really get on a fat tire bike. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also a small skating ring. So I guess if you're not from Canada and you're here just for a visit, this is a great place to stay because there's no more Canadian place like than this one. You have the, the cabins, you have the skating ring. All surrounded by the Rocky Mountains, so it's really hard to beat. So yeah, we hope you like this video. And of course, if you want to learn more about cabins in Alberta. We have an article specifically on that on mustdocanada.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. And otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, and to learn more about Canada, check out our website at mustdocanada.com. You guys look so cute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we also noticed people in here with mullets bringing back the 70s. So comment below, do you think the 70s should be brought back or should we just, you know, keep moving on?